Hi everybody and welcome to the channel. Well, I've been trying to make this video now for a little bit. I'm going to do it again because I keep going off the main topic and um, I guess it just sometimes takes a while to get used to doing stuff on camera. Well, I wanted to first inform y'all that if you haven't learned or haven't embarked on the journey to learn how to protect yourself, now is the time to do it. Last night at around 4.45 in the morning, our neighbor, my next door neighbor, her vehicle was broken into her truck and all of her, I'm sorry, my cat's by me, all of her tools were stolen and her nephew's vehicle was broken into and ransacked. And we do have some video. I hope that it will ultimately identify and lead to the perpetrators of this crime because that's how she, that's her livelihood. That's how she makes her living. And so this isn't the first time this has happened. And you know, I know it won't be the last. The scary thing about it is that it happened really so quickly and so seamlessly that, you know, it's like I've emphasized before, it just, these people are skilled professionals. And I just think the boldness that it took to go up onto her property where she, her, her vehicle was parked, her truck was parked, and to not feel, I mean, I, we've got the video of the car pulling up into the driveway and everything. I mean, this is really bold. You know, back in the day, I mean, it wasn't that long ago when people broke into stuff, they just smashed a window open and took what they could get. But this was like a real, I mean, I, it, this was just a really bold move. And I knew that as things start to warm up and as the unemployment hits and people are desperate, uh, this is just really the beginning, y'all. Uh, on top of that, we located, a neighbor let us know that there was a, a loaded rig behind one of our tires on our vehicle, a syringe full of drugs. I don't know what kind of drugs. I hope it wasn't, you know, it could have been fentanyl. I don't know. I'm sure it was something lethal. It's, it was definitely had about that much in it. And the plunger, the plunger has been, had been used so many times that part of it was like broken off and the needle was exposed. And I mean, this, this thing, this syringe had been used y'all many times, many times. This was not the only, I don't know, some poor soul, maybe they threw it out the window and they're at a recovery center today, but you know, I don't really, I really don't know, but it just made me sad. You know, it just makes me sad. There are so many lost people out there right now. And I have so much that I want to share with you about the, you know, about the dangers that are there. You know, one of the most important things that I think as a survivor, what got me over the hump and what got the wound to keep from hemorrhaging. And it, it got to a point about four years ago where I literally could not leave this house because that kind of stuff was going on. And you know, we're not able to move. We're not able to make the leap into, you know, there, I think there's this false idea that if you live in like a multi-million dollar neighborhood, or if you just move, make that geographic move to another neighborhood, that you're gonna get away from this particular element, from the criminal element. And I'm here to tell you that that is just absolutely not the case. Wherever you are is where you're at and you're gonna have to learn either how to defend yourself or, you know, if you feel like you need to make a move in with someone else and you'll be safer there, that is up to you and that is gonna be based on your, on your judgment. And in some cases, probably it would be better, but then I have to tell you that whoever you feel like you're gonna move in with ask yourself, is that person a safe person for me to be with right now? Would it be better for me to learn how to defend myself where I am and get my power back, take my power back, save whatever money I have, and learn how to deal with the enemy where I am? 
And yes, about four years ago, before I, it was, an, uh, I, I'm sorry, uh, I had a parole hearing coming up. Yes, yet another one. So I was in a place where it was in the summer and we had an exceptional amount of vagrants. And if you were to drive by our neighborhood, you know, 20 years ago, you wouldn't have thought there were any problems here. But now, you know, you could drive by our neighborhood, even though we're really, it doesn't look that bad. It doesn't look that bad now. But you could drive by our neighborhood and you just wouldn't ever guess that there were any problems. I mean, yes, some of the houses are run down, but some of them aren't. Uh, we all try to keep our places as clean as we can. Um, we live sort of in a flood zone. So, you know, it's hard to maintain any kind of lawn when your place, every time it rains hard, it floods. So I've kind of given up the ghost on that. Plus, you know, I got bit by a mosquito working out in the front yard and it gave me this dang Lyme disease. And I'm telling you that I'm just kind of done with the yard work. I don't want to keep putting myself out there when I know there's, you know, you have to cover yourself in chemicals. This is a whole nother video. Okay, so I'm getting off the topic. I'm really tired today. You know, my neighbor called me so early this morning and when I saw her name on my caller ID, I knew it wasn't gonna be good because we really only communicate, well, we communicate when something's happened. And I love her to death. I've known her for a very long time and I could hear in her voice, I could just hear it, that she was feeling bad because, you know, it was not the first time. We've all been, we've all had our vehicles broken into here at one time or another, but to have everything stolen from her like that, again, so, you know, four years ago, I'm rewinding. I'm going to try and keep, make it quick. Things had gotten really bad. We had somebody living out of their vehicle, and he would park his car in front of our house sometimes, and he was just one of those people who would crouch. He just looked like a predator. And, you know, I did some research, and I found out, you know, that he had had a past, quite a past. But I mean, I think it was pretty nonviolent. But at the time I was in that heightened state of that PTSD and just everything he did got under my skin. And all of the, I call them walkers. You know, we had a lot of walkers in our neighborhood. I mean, it was so bad that year. And I just really got to be to where I was totally, with that parole hearing looming, I just couldn't leave the house when my husband would go out of town on traveling for business. And so then I wouldn't eat. And so I pretty much stopped eating. It got that bad. And it was on Thanksgiving of that year that I was just given this idea, I believe by the Lord, Lord God, he, he, he came to my rescue and said, and I don't know how to tell you how he said it because I didn't hear it come word for word, but self-defense class. You would think that I would have already done that, but I didn't. I didn't do that until later in life. So four years or three years ago, three or four years ago, can't remember exactly when, but I decided to go ahead and do enroll myself in a weekend course on how to defend myself. And I have a weapon. I use a weapon, a firearm. And um, I have to tell you that, that it just totally changed, was a game changer because I had been living basically on one side of the fence for most of my life. And it really stemmed, if you're really honest about it in your life, you can kind of look back and see what or what or who kind of derailed you and I'm not saying to blame it on them but you know there are other people who are responsible for whatever got us off the track you know there's that root kind of cause I know for me it was my mom and living with her as a little girl she was a terrible alcoholic but she was an incredible pianist she was an incredible pianist she was a concert pianist but she was a terrible alcoholic and my dad and her divorced and I was, I got, my mom got custody of me. And as a result of her drinking, she was just not aware of the people that came and went out of our house. And 
you know, I was in situations often, often where, you know, they weren't good. And so from an early age, I had that wound. I did not have an attentive mother. I just didn't have that. I didn't have a mom. She did the best she could. She did the best she could, but her she made the decision that alcohol was who she, who she turned to and dedicated her life to. And she had the worst friends. She had the worst choice in friends. And one of them was a woman and she was just a total nightmare and she was a bad alcoholic and you know the bar scene on the weekends and all that crud that came along with it that I, you know, I had to participate in because it was my mom and, you know, that's just how it went. So, as a result, I never really learned how to take care of myself. I was around a sick and dying mother. I was around people who did not have my best interest out, who, you know, were monsters. And... I don't know why, but it just perpetuated in my family. You know, as I as I grew up, I was just I was raised around people that were substance abusers and did not know responsibly did not know how to be responsible about like certain things, money, um, and that's what happens when you are a substance abuser when you're addicted to something or you're an alcoholic. Or whatever it is that you're surrendering over um, to the enemy, you are not ever going to learn how to protect yourself or anyone else around you. You're not going to be able to teach anyone how to protect themselves. And so it really has taken me my whole life, my whole life to learn how to protect myself. And I think that's why God has spared me so many times. Because some really powerful things happened to me on this journey in life to reacquaint me with Jesus and God and the Holy Spirit. But, and I do believe that that's why he has allowed me to survive things that are considered really unsurvivable in terms of stranger abduction and then a home invasion type robbery break in. And I'm, I, I've had a, a really kind of a, I got the card, I got the violence card and maybe he wants me to share that with you because maybe you got the violence card maybe you got the victimization card too and you're scared to talk about it because there is a lot of shame and embarrassment that comes with it you feel so stupid like well you know if only i had done this and if only i had done that but you have to understand that it comes from such a deeper place of pain it comes from just such a deeper place you know having grown up out in the country for the majority of my childhood um, up until I left for college and then I came back for a while and I think I told part of that story but you would think I, have, I was comfortable around weapons I was comfortable around hunting and fishing and all that stuff but I didn't know how to take care of myself I did not even though I had been victimized when I was much younger I didn't talk about it and I knew I had that hitch in my giddy up I knew, I knew from my relationships that I had um, with different people at school, whatever, you know, I mean, I could always feel that I had that weakness when it came to protecting myself against people. Like, I, I didn't know how to defend myself, you know, and so I just was very passive. And, I, and they used to have a nickname for me in school. They, my French teacher called me La Timide, the shy one because or the timid one because I really truly I didn't know how to deflect it I didn't know how to whether it was in a verbal altercation which I always avoided I was always you know just very passive about everything but what I didn't realize is I was really hurting myself by being that way because I just absorbed I absorbed like a sponge and I know kids are just like that children are like that naturally but I've gone through most of my life just absorbing and so it reached a point about four years ago where three or four years ago where I just had to learn how to take care of myself or else I was going to die so back to the point um, I took the class and um, it was scary learning how to handle a weapon um, you know looking back I would have 
just taking private lessons. At, I would probably take a private lesson before I would did a group because if you've had any type of personal trauma, it's going to come out on the range. It's going to come out. If you're ready for it, if you're truly ready for it, it's going to come out. And a lot of instructors, I know my instructor was so patient and so uh, understanding. And he, he knew how to handle that. He knew how to handle that. I think he expected it. It's almost like you're going to have to throw it all up. For me, it was that way. Uh, once I started learning how to, I had these reactions, like all of the suppressed trauma and pain that I had been carrying around just started really coming out of me. Um, it was like lancing an old wound that had festered and had gotten infected. And I and it did make me sick for many years. And I still have to work on it, not relapsing. But once I went through the training and I really learned to be comfortable with my weapon and I learned the mechanics of it and I had that wonderful instructor and I took the time to really lick my wounds, I'm still, you know, I can tell that they're healing. I can tell that that just gaping wound that I tried to medicate. I spent a large part of my life trying to medicate. I tried to ignore it. I suppressed it. I went to counselors. I went to the wrong, some, I went to some counseling and I, I absolutely, I fell into the wrong hands and a couple of, a couple of different times that I was in counseling, I fell into some wrong hands. Uh, you have to be really careful if you're going to go into counseling or therapy, you got to be really careful who you choose. If they even do one thing that you know is inappropriate, but you with but you go ahead and keep on with it because that's how you were groomed. That's how you were trained. Is when people get weird, you go along with it. And I had to untrain myself from that. It's almost like learning. It's almost like potty training. And I'm just, I'm burying my soul because I truly don't know how much longer any, any of us has on this planet. I don't know how much longer I have. I, when I meet the Lord, I want to tell him that I shared with the world that it is okay to have gone through whatever thing you've been through. And it may make you feel so ashamed and you may feel like you let things happen. And maybe you had to let them happen in order to survive it. And while it was happening, you knew in your mind that you would have to deal with this later. But to survive it, you went ahead and let it happen. That is okay. That is a survival skill in and of itself. But it's one that if you don't deal with it and you don't tend to it, like the gaping wound that it is, it will eat you up. And it will manifest into so many different things that before you, before long, you're not even going to know who you are anymore. So, I am here to help tell you that the Lord God, Jesus, Holy Spirit, they know what you've been through. Jesus died the absolute most horrific death. People made fun of him. They spit on him. He was bleeding. He was shredded. He was he was dying what some people might even think a shameful death. He knows he's been there. His own family turned on him. There's not anything you can't tell him. And I still find myself struggling when I ask and talk to him because I am ashamed of I, I do I have been ashamed of things that I have been through and the things that you know it's just part of life it's just part of life but I just don't want anyone out there to suffer unnecessarily when I can let you know that there is help for you and that learning to take care of yourself at any age I don't care if you're 60 50 70 80 it is never too late it is never too late 
I don't care if you sleep with a knife under the covers. I don't care if you put a chair against that door. Whatever it is you have to do to protect yourself, to give yourself a fighting chance, now is the time to do it. Now is the time to do it. If you've always wanted to learn how to handle a weapon, now is the time to do it. And do it with somebody. A lot of gun teachers I learned, they are, they are the best people. They are really good people. Gun owners, people that really know and respect a weapon, know how to use a weapon. They're the finest people you'll ever meet. And it's because you have to be responsible. You really have to call on that part of yourself. Yes, you have that wounded part of yourself that needs a lot of attention and a lot of care and a lot of love and forgiveness. But then you've got to pull out that, I don't want to necessarily use the word sentinel because I saw that movie and it, oh my God, it just scared the ever-loving heck out of me. But you have to extract that person out of you. It's like a guard dog. A sh you know, you have to really pull that part of yourself out, rescue that part of yourself, because that is who is going to show up for you. Is that side of you. That's that healthy side of you. You know, if you were raised in a toxic environment, you're not familiar with the healthy waters. You're not familiar with saying no, putting up boundaries, um, declining events that you know you don't need to go to, staying out of large crowds, or just, a, you know, doing things that are going to make you healthier. Um, learning how to take care of yourself if you were your own child, you have to learn how to do that because no one is going to do it for you. And it's a skill set that's been lost. It's just something that is lost in our society. Um, I don't know when it started. It's been going on a long time. I think as soon as they got rid of God, this, this whole anti-God movement, I things that are going on in our society right now are just so evil and dark. They're just evil and dark. They're demonic. There's just no other way to put it. They're totally demonic. And those are the people that you have to protect yourself against. And that's why I'm making this video. And I know I'm kind of all over the place, but I just want to encourage you today to make a step towards prote protecting yourself. Do it while you can. Change a behavioral pattern. You know, don't wait till you run out of something. That's why, you know, I really like Amazon a lot. And I know that people say that these big corporations are the enemy. You know, I think we all know who the real enemy is. I can't get out there and grow a garden this year. I just don't have my health enough to do that. I just, I have to be honest with myself. I can't afford to do it this year. It's just not going to happen. Um, you know, I've got my few corn plants growing. I'm going to water them, but I can't do what I did last year. So as a result, I have to make concessions and I have to order extra stuff off Amazon right now. And one of the things, and I'm just going to pull this out that I really like since I cannot grow and I don't get paid and it's not a sponsor. They're not a sponsor. I'm sorry I'm a little rattled. I'm, I'm just kind of, you know, I'm a little bit upset about my neighbor. But these are a mix of, it's by Gourmanity. And these are freeze-dried vegetables, non-GMO. They don't have any, any junk in them, no poison. And it's a mix of, like, carrots, bell peppers, um, nothing spicy or anything like that. So if you've got a sensitive system, they're the freeze-dried mixed vegetable soup mix. And one cup of these with two cups of water you can put it in a skillet and it reaches a boil and you and you let it simmer for about 15 minutes you can add a little salt and pepper or just like a little butter olive oil you can make a lasagna you can put these over rice you can mix them and make like a warm salad with your greens like the ones that i grow and um you can order several bags of them or just order one bag it'll last you a while you cannot believe how much this makes. 
for a whole week. If I did two cups of these, I would have enough vegetables for a whole week. And that's just where I am right now. And I, I, I watch all these other YouTube stations, and I wish to God I could get out there and do all that work this year out in the garden. But I'm just not going to be able to do it. And that's another way I know how to take care of myself is not putting unrealistic expectations on myself. But I'm rambling. I'm going to come back and make another video. But I'm just, I just want to let y'all know that the violence is real. And, it, and, and the crime rate is it's just it's a real thing that's rising. People are really desperate, and I think we're going to start to feel it more and more. So whatever it is that you've been putting off on, when, on what you need to do to, to protect yourself, don't waste another moment. Pick up the phone. Call, you know, call somebody that has the knowledge and skill. What can I do to keep myself safe? I'm new at this. I don't know what I'm, what I'm doing. Um, and they know. They'll, you know, I, I truly believe that, you know, there, there will be somebody who can help you um, out there, especially if you consult like a, a shooting range, a gun range, or a gun shop owner. Those people are really usually very trustworthy. I have found them to be the most trustworthy people. So on that note, um, I hope everybody has a great day. Thanks for letting me ramble, and I'm going to be back. I have some other things I wanted to share with you guys. Okay, and God bless each and every one of you, and thank you to the subscriber that I have. I really appreciate it. I don't know who you are, but I thank you so much. Okay, God bless y'all. Bye-bye.